Council meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number one, acceptance of meeting minutes, minutes for meetings of February 7th, February 21st, 2017 to be accepted and approved by the town council. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman Juicy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Item number two, waste zero presentation. Mayor Lombardi requests to have waste zero, make a presentation and discussion and possible vote on trash collection. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the council, <clears throat> I'm sure everyone has read in the past as to the um, increase in the tipping fees at our resource recovery. Uh, this is something that um, needs to happen. I am on the board of resource recovery representing all of the communities and representing uh, the mayors, managers, and administrators. This is something that wasn't an easy uh, decision. The uh, resource recovery tip and fees haven't increased for some 25, 26 years. Um, resource recovery at this point in time is uh, really in a juggle, so to say, trying to increase the lifespan of the landfill. Um, and we think this is the answer. Um, and trying to address the recycling. You have no idea what we do in this town, visiting people to ask them to support and um, be cooperative with the, the um, recycling. This does affect our cost and our tipping fees every year. Now, <clears throat> the tipping fees, and we think they're gonna be increased, is gonna cost the town of our problems somewhere around $80,000 a year. That being said, <clears throat> I asked the uh, people here from Way Zero to come in. This is a program that's been very, very successful in many communities. It's not an easy um, decision to make. When I say decision, um, it's uh, not an easy political decision to make. We're gonna have to address this in the coming future. This is informational and informational only. We want you to hear what this program entails, how it could benefit us in the future. Not asking you to make a decision tonight, just asking you to listen. It may not be the most popular um, decision at some point, but I think the longer it goes on, <coughs> it's gonna make it an easier decision we have to address it. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to introduce Mark Dancy, who represents Way Zero, to give the council uh, a little background of uh, this operation. Thank you. Thank you. Can you just state your name for the record? Mark Dancy, and I'm with uh, Way Zero, Inc., but I'm here representing Rhode Island Resource Recovery. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the mayor for inviting us to speak tonight, and I'd like to thank the council for their time. I'll try to be brief. I did have a presentation, but I'm going to go from uh, memory and notes here for you all. Um, just to, to give a little bit of an overview with regard to uh, the tipping cost, uh, next year, given the new fee at Rhode Island Resource Recovery, the, the cost will go up by about $80,000 a year over the previous year, and then in year two, it will go up by about $150,000 over what it was last year. And so those are on top of the tipping fees that you already pay. Um, it is still well below market rate. Um, cities and towns in Massachusetts have been paying uh, more than double uh, in, in Connecticut what Rhode Island has been paying for years. So it is a little bit of a market correction, but uh, it is real, they're real dollars. And so uh, we look at 
uh, this program that Rhode Island Resource Recovery has developed called FUTURE. It's Fair Trash Reduction Program. Uh, it, it is a form of a user fee. It's got some very different uh, elements than traditional pay-as-you-throw does, but it also has a lot of the similar elements that the mayor was mentioning. Um, but I just want to talk about the life of the landfill for one minute because it is important. It is a great asset to have a landfill. And in a state like Rhode Island, there are two landfills, Tiverton's, uh, where they've had a pay-as-you-throw program for about seven years, and my math may be a little bit off. They were supposed to close their landfill several years ago, but because they cut their trash by nearly 50%, their landfill is still in existence, still open. Uh, so that was a very bold move, very good move for them as a, as a town. Um, and so when we look at the broader asset, the, the central landfill, it has about a life of 25 years left, but really in about 15 years, uh, we're gonna have to start looking at what decisions we make as a, as a state as to how we're going to dispose of our trash. And the options really aren't very good. Um, we just met with resource recovery. I mean, they're, they're gonna look at every possible option but the reality is no one, no town council or city council wants a landfill built in their city or town. I mean, that's the reality. And in a state as densely populated as Rhode Island, there aren't many sites that would be uh, viable and there aren't many councils that would allow it. So that option is going to be very difficult. Oftentimes people talk about what well, technology will save us. I am old enough to have been on a radio talk show in 1992 and 1993 called Let's Talk Trash with Dr. Garbage. Um, uh, it was not a highly rated show, I will say. But, uh, but, but what we talked about was technology and solutions for the solid waste industry. And most of those same discussions are still happening today. We like to believe there's going to be some magic that somehow the trash will disappear, it'll be cheap. But the last waste energy facility built down in Palm Beach, I think they say the cost came in at just under or right around three quarters of a billion dollars for the waste energy facility. So even if you can get that permitted 15 years from now, that's gonna be an expensive ask uh, for the residents. And so, so you think a $46 or $39 tipping fee is high, wait till it's 100 plus, because that's what you're faced with down the road. And, and the last thing I will bring up is last year, Senator Casey uh, in Pennsylvania introduced uh, a, the Trash Act to Congress. It did not pass, it didn't get that much traction, but it is a fairly popular idea in Pennsylvania and in other states that import garbage, and that is their objective was to get a national law, a federal law, that said that states would be allowed to impose their own solid waste master plans on states that are exporting. So as we look at Massachusetts, that'll be out of landfill space by 2022. We look at what's going on here in Rhode Island. Connecticut has waste energy facilities, but they're very old. Um, New England itself has very little landfill capacity left, so people will be net exporters. They are currently and will continue to be net exporters. So it's a challenge that's not gonna go away. So the program that Rhode Island Resource Recovery came up with is called Future, uh, Fair Trash Reduction, and the notion is simply this. Um, right now you pay for trash as a, as a town. Uh, you write a check to Resource Recovery for the disposal costs um, that money obviously comes from taxpayers and it comes in however you raise taxes here in, in town and the when it when it happens that way the residents are not accountable for how much trash they generate so they don't pay the bill directly and whenever you put in a uh, what I'll call a middle entity that hides the true cost of disposal or whatever whatever it is you get inefficiency. Now, how much inefficiency? Well, in Tiverton, uh, waste went down by 50% when they introduced pricing. Um, in most cities and towns that we work with, and we've been doing this for um, 20 years, our average waste reduction is 44%. So that would be 44% off that tipping bill for the city. Now, here's the catch, and here's the tough part, is the residents would then see the cost and they would have to pay directly. Okay, now, right now, they're paying it, they just don't see it. And so, the way that that's done is through, uh, it would be through a Rhode Island Resource Recovery uh, bag program. And so, as bags are collected in North Providence, if North Providence were to sign up for the program, 
the bags would be collected, the truck would be filled up, and the bags would be all Rhode Island resource recovery bags. That would be a city ordinance or a town ordinance that would have to be passed. The city would then pay no tipping bill to Rhode Island resource recovery because essentially the resident would be paying directly with the purchase of the bag. Now, many of you are probably familiar with uh, pay-as-you-throw programs that are over in Massachusetts. I'll give you the prices in Taunton. The price for a bag is $2 for a large bag. They don't have a small bag. They don't have a senior bag. Um, the price in North Attleboro is $1.50 for a large, $1 for a small. In Somerset, it's $2.50 for a large and $1.50 for the small. The proposal here is unique in that Rhode Island Resource Recovery is only trying to cover the tipping cost directly. So these prices may change some because the program is not set in stone. We're trying to get feedback and trying to determine what all the rules would be. But the pricing for a large 30-gallon bag uh, would be roughly 83 cents a bag. A smaller bag would be roughly 55 cents a bag. And what we typically call a senior or a single bag, which would be more like an eight-gallon bag. Sorry. How much for the small bag? I'm 55 cents. The smallest bag would be roughly 36 cents a bag. So that cost would then replace that revenue would then replace what the city's or the town is currently paying Rhode Island Resource Recovery, and that line item could be eliminated from the budget. Now, what you do with that savings, obviously, if you're a taxpayer, you probably want reduced taxes. If, you're, uh, if you have interest in schools, you may want that money to go to schools. If you have interest in public safety, you may want it to go there. I have never heard, in all my years of doing this, anyone say, my priority is sending more money to the landfill. So if we can reduce, by changing the structure of how something's paid, the cost of that service by upwards of 40 percent, that's what we're asking you to consider doing, because it's just the change in the dynamic and the psychology of how something's paid for changes the behavior of <coughs> the participating citizens. Can I, uh, yes, sir. Can I ask you a question? Councilman, uh, the cost of the bag, what are the chances of that cost rise? So um, while we haven't, the, the way that we've discussed, uh, proposed that Rhode Island Resource Recovery structure this would be every two years uh, by their new rule for their tipping fee, they will uh, have a new tipping fee um, that that would, uh, that then would be uh, asked for. So, so 2017 and 2018 are set for the tipping fee. Um, the 2019 and 2020 tipping fees, as that tipping fee is developed, that would be formulaic back into the bag price. So it would only go up by the commensurate rate that the tip fee went up. That's what we have suggested as a mechanism to increase have the price. Have you had experience with this any other place? All over, yes. But this okay. particular... And what's, and what's the percentage of increase on that? On that? Well, so generally, uh, the cities and towns try to capture more than just the disposal cost. So that mechanism that ties directly to a tip fee doesn't exist. So typically, uh, cities and towns will wait many years because it's a heavy lift to change the fee. But then they'll typically go, say, from you know, $1.50 to $1.75, and it'll be sort of incremental changes like that. But I'll give you an example. Worcester, who, uh, a city that has had this program for 20 five years and has netted savings uh, of right around a hundred million dollars during the time that they've had this program. Uh, they started out at 50 cents back in 1993, 1992. Um, now they're at $1.50 for the large bag. So it has increased, but, but our proposal, our suggestion to resource recovery would be to price the bag exactly where tipping costs are. And I would say that it is important to note that tipping costs it is unlikely that, uh, while it's frustrating to listen to tip tipping costs going up today, it's unlikely that they're going to go, not, not continue to go up because they're still well below market rate. And so... Um, See, that's where I worry. No, no, not that I'm, I'm going to make a comparison that isn't a good comparison. But I remember some years ago when they started charging for parking for the beaches, it was 50 cents. And now it's $15. And this, is, and this is what I worry about. When you go to the people and you say, okay, it's 83 cents, but maybe 20 years from now it'll be 
five bucks a bag, six, seven bucks a bag, I, I, eight <coughs> bucks a bag, ten bucks a bag. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. Councilman, it's a, legitimate, it's a legitimate concern. Is, but there, is there some mechanism any place where you've dealt where they prevent something going crazy like that? Well, I think th this, is the, this is the perfect example of a mechanism that is in place in that the ratio of, of the cost of the tipping fee to the bag can be set by Rhode Island Resource Recovery and for your contract remain permanent. So if tipping fees go from, let's say, 45 to $50, the bag price is going to go up that commensurate amount. But the, si the town is going to pay one way or another. I mean, whether they pay with the taxpayers paying in and then paying the bill as a one bill or each individual pays is what will allow you to pay, you know, 40% less tons. So, but I do agree that that's, it's critical that that is set to the tipping fee so that there is no imbalance between the two programs. That's the problem. Councilman? How many uh, communities currently <coughs> use the bag system in Rhode Island? Uh, I would say, I think there are five um, that have Middletown, um, uh, Westerland, I'm drawing a blank, Tiverton, um, and then there are a couple of the transfer stations on the south, very south shore. And then what would be, you know, the average bags a household would use on a weekly basis? So uh, looking at the large bag, it's about 1.1 large bags per week. And so it, it really, not everybody uses the large bags, but that's sort of a aggregate average of the bag. So you might use two small bags or, but the average is about 1.1 large bag per week. And then <clears throat> how do we know that, I'm not familiar with the system, so I'm assuming each bag's only gonna hold so much weight. So what's dumped weekly the cost of the bag substitutes the tipping fee. So how do we know that in the event we're dumping more than what we're actually bringing in in bag revenue? So the revenue, the, the good part about this uh, program also is that you're not concerned about the revenue because uh, the revenue is, goes all to Rhode Island Resource Recovery in lieu of your payment. No, I, I, I understand that. What I'm, what I'm saying is, how do we know that the cost of the bags are covering the tipping fee, or on the reverse side, how do we know that Rhode Island Resource Recovery is, not, is now making more off the bag system than they were with us just paying a to tip? Well, it's, so it's a formula where we estimate the pounds per bag based on the hundreds of other cities that we work with and the gallon capacity of the bag. So it's, it's a formula <coughs> that's set for the two years of the contract, and I would recommend that it, it remains for, uh, the same formula should apply over and over again. Um, people, uh, while you know, every town does tell me that they're different than other towns, the reality is the math is pretty similar across towns all around the country that we deal with. So uh, we can pretty much project how much the average bag is going to weigh. Um, so so on average, with the five communities that you are collecting the bags for, well, that are paying in the bag program, are they netting an even amount to what the community would have paid in tipping, or is Rhode Island Resource Recovery losing money on the bags, or are they making money on the bags? Well, right now, the communities that are doing it opted to do it on their own, and so I, I'm not gonna be positive on Middletown's uh, fee, but as an example, I think they charge $2 for a large bag, and that covers, and, and then a commensurate fee for the smaller bag, and that covers uh, enough of their budget that they're comfortable, but they still pay the tip bill to uh, resource recovery. So they're collecting the bag fee? They collect the bag fee in their case. This, this, the future program is really, <coughs> the idea was um, how do we extend the life of the landfill and get cities and towns to throw away less trash and uh, similar to what I said with with Tiverton and and make sure that we get the right revenue per ton and that's that's how we so Rhode Island resource recovery really is agnostic with regard to which program you choose from a financial standpoint but from a long-term life of the asset standpoint 
they would, sh they would prefer cities and towns reduce waste. And um, that's, that's the objective of the program, and to give cities and towns an option, an alternative to um, this increase that they're, they're facing. So thank you. Just, a, just a brief history. I mean, this isn't new. I had a map of uh, Massachusetts. I think there are 150 cities and towns that have a pay-as-you-throw program in Massachusetts. About 75% of the population of Bristol County, which is sort of mirror, Massachusetts sort of mirrors Rhode Island, um, has pay-as-you-throw. The reason that uh, cities and towns in, in other parts of the country have done this is that their tipping fees got up to 60, 70, 80 dollars a ton, and they watched those constant increases. And because the way Rhode Island Resource Recovery has, has structured their, their fees, the fee has been set at about 32 dollars a ton for the base rate for cities and towns for 25 years. So when there is no change and no increase, it's, it is easier, I would say, to not implement a program like this, whereas Tiverton looked at their situation differently as does North Attleboro or Taunton or cities where they have a very high tip fee and they see the opportunity to reduce their cost by 40%. So they have they've grabbed that and that's, um, and that's I think what, what, what it, now we're sort of looking at a, a phase where tip fees won't be as stable, um, certainly not for that length of time. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, thank you for the presentation. Mayor? I think, um, and I'm not gonna speak for resource recovery, but being on the board, I can give you a little um, insight. So as Mark had stated, the bags in um, other communities are paying maybe $2.50. So resource recovery thought we would institute a program and that same bag is, as Mark says, gonna be 83 cents here. So resource recovery tried to come up with a program to work along with the communities and then increase the life of the landfill. Now I can only tell you <coughs> what goes on here. So we're continually visiting residents that are not recycling. And they tell us, oh, no, no, I, I recycle. Then we show them the picture of the front of their home where they're not recycling. And we just talked about this, and Dick and I just talked about it. I think Mark mentioned it. So when this is passed through <coughs> to the taxpayer via the budget, they don't realize what the cost is because it's all built in with the tax rate. So and I'm just trying to think of the right word. Um, accountability, um, responsibility, to just throw the trash out because our job is to pick it up. And I think what will happen here is based on the numbers that we have and based on the history of some of the other, a lot of the, uh, all of the other communities is that now when you're gonna pay 83 cents for a <coughs> bag, you're gonna do what needs to be done and you're not gonna waste it. And I think the issue here is that if it's only 83 cents for that larger bag, and that'll come off the tipping fee, and you know, try to educate the people, this is what needs to happen, it could be just a wash for us, but the wash at the rate we're at today, and not the increase, not only for this year to come, next year and the year after because resource recovery cannot, and correct me if I'm wrong, continue to operate the way it is right now, financially, so to say. I mean, when the tip and fee doesn't change in 25 years, <coughs> you know, so again, appreciate you listening. Hopefully, Mark has given you or us an education, and it's something that we may need to talk about at some point. I got one question. How's it going? How many, are there any communities in the country that have um, incinerators that are, that are, that meet EPA and all the other <coughs> standards that have to be? 
So the, the waste energy option is, is there. So the state may look at that. Again, I'm not going to speak for what's going to happen here in 15 years with, with, uh, with waste energy. But, but Massachusetts has had, has I think, four operating waste energy facilities. They haven't built one. They've had a moratorium on them for 20 plus years. Very few have been built in the last 20 years. Um, I, th there is good technology to it. It's just not inexpensive. So right now you have a, an asset that, that allows you to uh, bury garbage relatively inexpensively. Um, but that is going away. Um, what, I, yeah, what, what, what bothers me is that even with the bags, eventually we're going to run out of room. So what do we do then? Because the cost will be astronomical <coughs> to transport the trash out of state. And Mimi, you just mentioned about uh, an incinerator and the cost to build an incinerator today. And that's why you know, people are just staying away from Yeah, but my question is what's going to happen eventually when, when, we're, when we're, even with the bags, we're going to run out of room? Well, then what do we do? Yeah, yeah. I know we won't be around. Oh, but I'll uh, answer can I, just Councilman uh, De Lorenzo has a question, and then you. Know, excuse me, just one second. Okay. Three bags equals a container. Three or four bags, or two or three bags equals one container, a 90-gallon container. So the the large bag would be 33 gallons, 32, 33 gallons. So roughly, yes, sir. Three, four, three, four. Where do you buy the bags? So the, the program would be set up where wherever people shop uh, within the town reasonably, mom and pop stores, um, uh, CVS, Walmart, anybody would be eligible to carry the bags. Um, that's a well-established system um, in other cities and towns. So the idea is to make it convenient. And, and just to touch on one other thing, that the, it is like a utility, I guess is the best way to put it. It really is like water, electricity, and the reason that we've looked at this for, again, so many years, and all these cities that start it continue to do it, um, is number one, it's successful, but number two, it's very intuitive to people. Uh, they pay for what they use. So it's not just water and electricity. If you go to Dunkin' Donuts and you buy two coffees, you pay for two. If you buy one, you pay for one. It really, it really is very intuitive for people. And so while it isn't always immediately met with excitement, uh, and sometimes it's met with uh, less than excitement, uh, after a few months, people adjust to it, generally speaking, in, in almost every case, Hopefully. very, very quickly. And we see, uh, you know, actually a lot of pride in the programs that people have. Um, and obviously, <coughs> they save a lot of money. So, thank you. Thank you. Just state your name for the record, sir. Yes, uh, Mike McGonigal with Resource Recovery. Uh, I just thought I'd address the question about what happens after the landfill. Uh, when resource recovery uh, adopted its uh, most recent solid waste plan, uh, we basically set some uh, near-term near -term goals, some medium-term goals, and some long-term goals. The near-term was to fix the financing, and that had to do with raising the tip fee, as, as painful as a, a decision that is. Um, we feel that's kind of going in place. The next thing was to address some of the things that this type of a program um, is to address, and that is to, to get the most out of the existing landfill we have today. Today's landfill, we estimate, has life through about 2038 at targeted loading rates, okay? Seems like a long way in the future. It is not, not in the terms of the waste industry. Um, Right now, over the next couple of years, two to three years before we start the next long-range planning process, we are undertaking a lot of research to help us do the homework to figure out what the next best option is. To your point, there will always need to be some form of land disposal. It doesn't matter if you're doing waste to energy. It doesn't matter if you're doing composting or <coughs> processing every bit of recycling you can get. 
there is always something left that you need to bury. So whether it be here in Rhode Island at the existing site, somewhere else, or long haul rail to a, a landfill in Ohio where you face the uncertainty of having to rely on other states to get rid of your waste, we will need landfill. And the purpose of this program is to try to do something in the interim to maybe see if we can make that 2038 be 2058. And, and that's what the goal of this is. So I, I hope that helps to answer your question. The fact is landfilling is by far the most inexpensive way to deal with waste in the short run. All of the other technologies are extremely more expensive, but they go hand in hand. So that's what we're trying to do. Thank you. So Mr. Chairman, this isn't an easy issue to address. <clears throat> Being on that bo on the resource recovery board, um, I was one of the people that was the bearer of this. Um, I don't know if you want to call it bad news to the League of Cities and Towns. Uh, we convinced the other managers, mayors, and administrators that this is an issue. The tipping fees need to in be increased, <coughs> and I think everyone at this point in time has digested that and realize because of the, the reasons that were stated here tonight, this needs to happen. Again, just think about this. Resource recovery is trying to work with all the communities. Again, look at the cost of the bags. And Manny, I think Mike answered it correctly. We don't know. At some point, there's gonna be a problem it's gonna be an issue with the, with the disposal of trash. But I think our job sitting here today in 17 is to do whatever we can so that in 20 years or 25 years, we can't be accused of not trying to address it. So again, <coughs> thank you very, very much. Thank you. Councilman. When we're done with this, I just have a question for them. On, on trash. Go ahead. Not related to bags. Just out of curiosity, considering, you know, re resource recovery is here tonight. Thank you for the presentation. This council sent a letter to resource recovery last month and the month before asking if we could do a recycling day here in the town. And we didn't know that, you know, an application has to be filled out and I guess your 2017 dates are scheduled. We're wondering if there's a possibility that you could potentially help us to get a date for this summer so that we could do one within the town. I'll look into it. I think when you make promises, you can play all out of the box long range. And if that can happen this year, then you can make the one year and make sure that's what they have to do. Okay. Thank you. Mr. President. <coughs> Councilman. Mr. Dossi, I'd just like to ask, and I do appreciate your presentation, it was very informative. And Mayor, thank you for inviting our guests this evening. I wanted to ask if you would kindly email our clerk with uh, the information, the salient points of what you covered this evening for our future reference. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, item number two. CPA's presentation. Mayor Lombardi requests to have all right <coughs> Infrastructure Bank make a presentation regarding a CPA's commercial property assessed clean energy agreement and possible passage of a resolution. Mayor. And Mr. President, uh, we chatted about this and uh, just another program that we think um, we'd like to be involved with. And we asked the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank to come before you this evening to explain uh, this program, or oh, what's available to us. Uh, Michael Bayer with the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank. Um, again, I'd like to thank the mayor for having us here in the council, for listening to um, and considering this, this program that the Infrastructure Bank has to offer to all municipalities across Rhode Island. Um, many of you may not know the name Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank. We were formerly known as the Clean Water Finance Agency. Uh, we've been a quasi-state agency here in Rhode Island for over 26 years. Um, recently, our name has changed and our mandate has expanded um, to include new programs, 
um, for municipalities, commercial property owners, residential property owners, and private developers in the energy efficiency and renewable energy space um, and the brownfield remediation space. But over the 26 years, we've provided finance to municipalities um, and residential property owners, typically in the wastewater and drinking water sectors, and we've mobilized over $2 billion of private capital to invest into, into those sectors. Um, commercial PACE, or Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy, is one of our newest programs that allows commercial property owners to access long-term fixed rate capital to make um, energy efficiency and re renewable energy improvements to their properties. Um, this program was put into statute in 2015. Um, the bank launched the program in April. Last April, we're about to close our first deal on Thursday. Um, and kind of the crux of the program, um, it really allows commercial property owners to invest in cash flow positive projects, right, where the savings from the renewable energy and energy efficiency projects exceeds the debt service that they would pay on an annual basis, improving their cash flow, um, improving the value of the building if we look at capitalization rates, and um, really improving the asset value and kind of operational aspects for the, the property owner. Um, the program does require a municipality to opt in by council resolution, um, and then the town would sign an agreement with the infrastructure bank. The reason for this is that the financing is secured by a lien being placed on the property, and it's a voluntary lien. The property owner knows that they're doing this, um, and that lien is then um, assigned to the infrastructure bank, and we assign that to a private lender. So there are no state funds um, lending into this program. We as the infrastructure bank have set up um, the infrastructure to work with property owners to qualify projects, uh, making sure that the contractor's work uh, meets industry standards, and then we bid them out to kind of a lending tree type model of qualified capital providers who bid on the projects ultimately to get the lowest, um, the lowest value or the lowest interest rate for the, the property owner. Um, why is CPACE kind of different than what a uh, commercial property owner could get on a traditional commercial loan? Um, one, it's, it's fixed rate financing and long term. Um, so typically commercial loans for these types of improvements only go out to about 10 years and the property owner has to put you know, 10, 20% down. Um, this is up to 100% financing and we can go up um, out to 25 years, which is about the useful life of a, um, a set of solar panels now. Um, but the loan will not exceed the average uh, weighted average useful life of those improvements. Um, because a lien is placed on the property, it's actually transferable. So if you're a commercial property yeah. owner who buys a building, um, wants to invest in that building, but you're not sure that that building may turn over in five years, um, you have the ability with commercial pace to then um, sell the property and then the rights to that, or the, the payments for the assessment, transfer the new owner. Why is this good? Because the new owner then benefits from those savings um, as well as making those debt service payments. Um, one, second. Um, one thing the infrastructure bank has done um, is the, now the billing and collection of the assessment. We've actually centralized that and taken that out of the municipality's hands. Um, so on behalf of the, all the municipalities and within the agreement, it says the municipal infrastructure, the infrastructure bank will bill and collect the CPACE assessments, so there's no additional work that the municipality has to do other than place the lien and then notify the infrastructure bank if there's a tax sale on the property. Um, we have 13 participating municipalities already. Um, we're involved uh, in discussion with, with 12 more. We have a handful of projects in North Providence that are, we've been engaging with property owners and they want to move forward, um, but they're not moving as quickly as they may and vendors may not work as quickly because um, the town has not opted into the program yet. Um, this program is successful in Connecticut. Um, Connecticut's been doing this for over four years, structured very similar to how, what we do in Rhode Island. They've uh, mobilized over $100 million of private capital um, for energy efficiency and renewable energy projects in, Rhode in, um, in Connecticut. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, we view this as an economic, just another tool in your economic development toolbox to help upgrade buildings um, <coughs> in your municipality. Mr. President, I have a question. Uh, Councilman. At the beginning of the presentation, yes. um, how, many, how many of these deals have you said you funded? We're about to close our first deal this week. Okay. So deals. you're about to close the first. Of mm -hmm. the 13 that are participating, how many are in the pipeline? How many projects do we have in pipeline? Correct. Over 100 projects in pipeline. Over 100. Over 100 yeah. projects. What's the durational length? You know, what's the duration from start to finish? So, so <laughs> um, it, one, it depends on, and there's one thing I forgot to, to say, which is a, a, a key point in the program. Um, the project that we're about to close, um, 
started in September, and we're about to close financing now, and then the solar panels will be up in April. Um, one key component to the program is uh, because the lien requires mortgage holder consent, so mortgage holders have to consent to the lien jumping, or to, to them subordinating their mortgage to the lien. So mortgage holders have to buy in that this is a good cash flow positive project, and that's in that first project. That's what took the longest because it's a new program in Rhode Island. Um, it's a local bank in Rhode Island who got comfortable with this project is actually going to improve the cash flow of the property and make it easier for them to actually not only pay back this loan, but pay back uh, their current mortgage. So what's the average cost? For the, uh, so our first two, it, I mean, it depends on, pro on size. The first two projects will be solar. They're about 400000 each. Um, they're going to save over the, they're going to save about $200,000 after debt service. So what's the, what's the total assessed value of the building the solar is going on? Total assessed value. Um, on, well, obviously, a bank's not going to lend a $400,000 solar project to a $50,000 building. Correct. And so Correct. our program and our rules and regulations, we do not allow, you know, we do not allow um, projects to go over 100% loan to value. We qualify all capital providers. And typically what we're seeing is with the PACE assessment added to their mortgage um, and any other encumbrances on the property, it doesn't exceed 80% loan to value, total debt to value. So do you have a maximum and minimum on who you would loan to? We qualify, so they can't go over 100%, and we qualify capital providers who use their own underwriting metrics, and we ensure that they don't go over no, at least 95% um, total debt to value with that PACE assessment attached, but the industry standard is 80%. So you would do a, a very small business to a very large business? Correct, yeah. There's no, there's no minimum or no maximum size. Okay. Right now we have a project that's about $70,000 in pipeline that's moving very quickly. The property doesn't have a mortgage. Um, and it's a small business um, in Bristol with a very small solar, um, solar project and a little bit of energy efficiency. So we're also seeing projects in, in nursing homes that are anywhere from 2 to $3 million. And you said you had how many potential properties in North Providence? Um, we have a, hand, a handful. We have about five or six right now. One that's moving a lot faster than others. Okay. And then, I don't know, let's say one of those properties, who, who is your, who, who would be a competitor of, of yours, if you don't mind me asking? So what options does the commercial property owner have yeah. compared to you? Sure. So the commercial property owner, one, um, could access National, National Grid has an on-bill financing program where they only offer 0% um, loans for up to four to five years, but they're limited to $100,000. Typically, c based projects average four hundred to $500,000, but there's no limit. Um, if it's a solar project, they could take out a commercial loan. The commercial loans typically go about 10 years. No one goes really longer than 10 years. Um, they could refinance their whole property um, and add the cost of a solar project to the refinancing of a mortgage if they wanted to do that. Um, that would be a little bit longer term. We've, s we've actually seen um, commercial property owners who wanted to do PACE, couldn't get mortgage holder consent, <laughs> go to another bank, refinance the whole thing, and then just get a better rate, and that's great. Um, if it's a solar project, they could enter into a lease agreement or a PP, uh, um, a power purchase agreement with a third party. So there are other options. Um, not, we're not just the, the only one here, but we're an, a new tool, and really it's a transferability of the assessment that really allows commercial property owners to get over the fear that they're going to be stuck with this payment um, when they're actually not getting those benefits years down the road. And then, uh, very last question. Yeah. So the council needs to opt in mm -hmm. to do this. Yes. And, and I do apologize. I don't no, really no, have no. much info other sure. than the presentation you gave. Yep. What is the reason why you would need the council to initiate for us to opt into this? It's in, it's in statute. Is the <laughs> It's in the, the pay statute. Um, that's the easiest way. Um, municipalities, you know, t typical in other states, um, that's how it works. When we were originally created this program, so in Connecticut, every municipal tax collector sends a pay lien, pay assessment bill to the property owner. They collect those funds and then they remit them to the capital providers. We wanted to, after the pay statute was passed, we figured it'd be easier to centralize it so there was no additional work um, on the local municipality. So. Some municipalities ask that reason um, because it seems like there's not as much involvement as there should be. Again, all these projects have to meet all local zoning, all permit requirements, all fees are paid for the filing of the lien for the permits. Um, so none of that, that's, that's all consistent with what you would normally do in the process. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Bale, you'll be providing the council with a package with a sample 
resolution or sample agreements that you've entered into? Um, yeah, we can. We have a template resolution. We have the um, the template agreement that all the municipalities have signed that I can um, send to the clerk. Okay. Any when other questions? Yeah, when, when's your program ending? When does it end? Yeah. There is no end date. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna make I a. Should say that. I'm gonna entertain a motion to. You have another question? I just one? wanted to ask if you could, as well as the template. Uh, ordinance, if you could include some background information. I explored your website, mm -hmm. but I would appreciate if you could forward uh, additional information. Sure, I have a, I have a, pre I have a uh, presentation, um, and then when we issue a press release for our first project early next week, I can be happy to send that there um, as well to show you guys. That Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to entertain President. a motion to send this item to the Finance Committee. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman DeStefanis. Any questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank we'll you. be in touch from the finance committee. Should I send the information to the town Yes. Clerk? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, liquor license. Notice was given of a public <laughs> hearing to be held on this date in the Providence Journal on February 17th and 24th, 2017 for a BV limit, limited liquor license from Colos LLC DBA, the Dabawala Lunchbox, 2009 Smith Street, North Providence, Rhode Island, 02911. Is anybody here from the Dabawala lunchbox? There's a motion to carry. <coughs> next meeting. Second. Okay, a motion's been made by Councilman Juicy to continue this to the next meeting. Seconded by Councilman Brady. Any questions? <coughs> there being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Item number five <coughs> Eastman. Communications Director Ralph Nahigian requests discussion and vote concerning an easement requested by Verizon pertaining to the cell tower site at station number two at 366 Fruit Hill Avenue. Mr. Nahigian. Um, this is a standard uh, easement for the tower that's going up at station two on Fruit Hill Avenue. They need to come across, instead of coming across the parking lot and the whole ramp at the station, which would cost big money to replace, they have to add a pole to the right of the entrance to the fire station, and then they want an easement to run their cable um, from the pole to the uh, communication building at the tower. Okay, everyone, everyone has this information in front of us. Is there any questions for Mr. Nahegan? I'll make a motion, please. Second. Okay, a motion's been made by Councilman Juicy to grant the easement, seconded by Councilman Brady. Any further questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Item number six, Salvatore Mancini Resource and Activity Center. Received a request from Barry Fishback, Chairman of the Salvatore Mancini Resource and Activity Center to discuss issues concerning the center. I know Mr. Fishback cannot attend tonight, so someone will be speaking on his behalf. Just state your name for the record, please. Albert Peterson. Mr. Mr. President, I have a question. Where is our lawyer? He's recused on this issue. Okay, I, I have a question with that uh, for the attorney. Mr. Welch, Attorney Welch, I have a question for you, sir. He, he can't answer questions on this issue. Okay. 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 My question is, okay. Mr. President, members of the Town Council, thank you for the opportunity to allow me to appear in front of you this evening. Uh, over the past couple of years, the uh, Board of Directors, the Council, and the Town of North Providence have made milestones communicating with each other. It's important that we continue with this effective communication to reach immediate resolutions to some of the issues that have uh, arisen. The purpose of my appearance this evening is to discuss some of these uh, issues and try to move forward uh, to take care of these problems as a whole. I'd like to present to you in order to receive the issues that uh, may uh, be aware of or you may not be aware of that directly affect the day-to-day -day services provided to our seniors. Number one, a health benefit affecting uh, one employee of the center from December 1st, 2016. Services for snow removal, deactivation of fuel cards, transportation of vehicle repairs, and information requests at the recommendation of an advisory committee. Health benefits, as you know, the, per chapter six, section 12-6-1, our employees are allowed to take part 
and town's health care insurance only. We were notified on December 1st, 2016 by the town payroll manager that they've been advised by the administration at this time they cannot add or have any new employees from the center that the town's Blue Cross Delta Dental or prescription plans. It was explained to the payroll manager that we were merely substituting coverage that the placement of a recent retired employee and not adding anybody or an additional employee. To date, this one employee continues to be without any benefits, uh, without health care benefits, justification or, or collective bargain agreement with the International Labor Union in, in town charter. Snow removal services on December 2nd during a telephone conversation with uh, Chief of Staff Dick Forcer. We had planned for a new snow plow for the winter. The senior center was there forced to hire a private contractor on a couple of occasions, on two occasions, separate for snow removal services. This was an additional expense that was not budgeted for. Town has always entered and ensured that the senior center be plowed before it's opening prior to 8 a.m. over the course of many years. It's the town's responsibility to provide snow removal services as the owner of the property per the lease and agreement with the town. The deactivation of fuel cards on January 27, 2017, we were notified that the town director of communications that he was instructed by the town administration to deactivate the two fuel cards issued to the senior center effective February 1st, 2017. As you may recall, there were many lengthy discussions with the council during the budget hearings. It was decided jointly that we did not need to include a gasoline item anymore because the town assured us that they would continue to provide gasoline needed to transport the seniors each day. Transportation vehicles, in year a van was purchased the federal grant earmarked for the Salvatore Mancini Resource and Activity Center to provide transportation services to the seniors in our community. The van is owned, insured, and registered by the town of North Providence. Normal procedure, we would notify the Director of Mechanics Division that the van lost power and was broken down in the senior center's parking lot. This is due to a mechanical failure that the uh, town's maintenance division previously repaired on several occasions. On February 17, 2017, we were notified that the town will no longer repair any vehicles associated with the senior center. The van currently remains out of service in the parking lot at the senior center. During the last three weeks, we have used a spare van which has no heat to transport the seniors on a daily basis. I've outlined four priority issues preventing us from continuing to provide the exceptional service that our seniors are not accustomed to, the seniors are not only accustomed to, but deserve as well. I'd like to request that we all work together the Town of North Providence, the Mayor's Office, the Council, and the Board of Directors, of which I am newly elected to, um, and ask that we have several members, members also from the Mayor's Office, if he so chooses, to attend our monthly meetings, which are on the second Tuesday of every month, to ensure that the lines of communication continue to be open, and the Council and reach an immediate resolution and help us to meet in the resolution with the town of what I presented to you this evening. Um, unfortunately, the uh, chairman and also the director were supposed to be here. Um, they are sick. They both are with a norovirus, so I was asked to present this to you. It is of my opinion that we are here for a specific <coughs> reason, to help work with our seniors and also obviously uh, work together if we can on any issues that I don't see, we can't sit down together and work out. And that's my full intention and one of the reasons why I got on the board. Um, I'll entertain any questions, concerns, if you'd like. Um, well, first off, Albert, I want to thank you for coming here tonight. Um, I know this is a very contentious issue, um, but for the two new council members, this is probably going to be a first take, you know, on this issue and for the rest of us we've been dealing with this for three years and um, I've been in the middle of it for three years right now and um, this isn't aimed towards you I know you're a new board member and I, I frankly give you a lot of credit for coming here tonight but it's gone too far now and I don't have the answer to the res what, what is a resolution to this issue but you know, I've been thinking about this constantly, and it's, it's a little disturbing to me when this is a political field that we're all in. And, 
you know, all I hear is it's all about the seniors, it's all about the seniors, it's all about the seniors. And my question is, is it all about the seniors? When you have people working against the person that runs the day-to-day -day operations in the town during an election cycle, you had, I, I don't think that's right at all. I know if I worked against my boss in an election or something like that, I'd probably lose my job tomorrow. Um, we have no say over the board members, and we have no say over the expenses over there. And I will say, I'm not going after the Senate. They've, done, they've provided the information that this council has looked for. I know there's more to come. But I think it's time in this budget hearing that we start changing things around a little bit, and hopefully that will work for the benefit of all of us. We need more say in what goes on over there. Um, I'm, not, I'm speaking for myself. I don't know how my council members feel. I think we need more say on who goes on that board. I think the administration needs say on who goes on that board. I think it needs to be split up evenly. If, correct me if I'm wrong, is there nine members? Yes. Why couldn't it be three appointees here, three appointees from the senior center, and three appointees from the administration? Anything is possible if we're willing to sit down at the table and work together. Okay, I 100% agree with you. I can only speak for myself and what's going on and what I would like to do now. No, and I because appreciate Because the problem is, and I absolutely agree with you, I understand the reality. We're far from all stupid, okay? And I understand that. We have an obligation to do our job. The problem is the collateral damage that's going on because of exactly what you went on. And that's what bothers me at night when I lay up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and think about Mr. Smith who's in the high rise and he's gonna, whether or not he's gonna get that one meal because his pump may go off or may not, his insulin pump, and he needs that meal mm -hmm. because the place is open, shut, whatever the case may be. Um, the board of directors runs the center. It's a 501c3 with rules and regulations and guidelines that can be changed, okay? We need you or your designees to come to the meeting. I would love to have the mayor, the chief of staff, somebody from their office come to the meetings. Okay, it's not, this is not something that can't be done. And we've welcomed, and the opportunity has been there at any point in time for people to come to the meetings. And I understand why people don't, because of the issue and how it's gotten out of control now. And, you know, if changes need to be made on any level or anything, then fine. Like you said about, you know, working for people, whatever the case may be, again, we have to keep in mind and remember the reason that we're there. And if we let that cloud our judgment or if we let that cloud our votes, then we don't belong there anymore. And if we have problems, let's sit down together and work them out where everybody's happy, the boss, you people and the board to benefit the people that go there and take advantage of the services that are provided there. That's my opinion. And I appreciate that. And I, and I just feel as though for a little while now, this council has been, been being used as a chess piece where we've tried to help for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here it is. Everyone wants to run and, and fight their battle. And then when there's repercussions because of that, let's go run to the town council. And we don't run the day-to-day -day operations of this, but, you know, of what's going on. Personally, I've been doing a lot of research. Um, what we provide for our center, no other, no other city or town centers provide that. Mm -hmm. But maybe, unfortunately, at this time, it is time to start looking at scaling some of those activities or services back. I know it's a hard decision. It's not a decision I want to make but maybe the spending needs to come in line with what other cities and towns spend on their center. Um, and I will be looking for, to make some of these suggestions at the budget hearing. So does anyone else like to comment? I got one. Councilman. The big problem, Mal, has been uh, we requested certain information from the center. Mm -hmm. We don't get it. They absolutely refuse to send that information. And we're supplying the center, the center with three quarters of their budget. 
<coughs> I think it's only fair that when we ask for finance information, we should be granted that. <coughs> not have a, not have the Senate go out and hire a lawyer and come and sue us. I don't disagree with you, man. You're right. And he used, and, and the Senate used the money that we're giving them for the, <coughs> for the budget to sue us. I mean, that's not, that's not right. And I that's been the big stumbling block and the big problem. Give us the information when we ask for it. We're giving you three quarters of the money to run the place. Just, and, and nobody's looking to, to bury you. Nobody's looking to put you under. God, that's the worst thing you could ever possibly think. I mean, I, I love that place. I think it's, uh, they've done a great job, but give us what we ask for. I'll you are 100% right, and, and in one of the meetings, again, please keep in mind, I am new to this board. I made the uh, recommendation and vote, and it passed in unanimously that not only will we not just be sending the information to the president, but we're going to send it to everybody on the council. So everybody has the information. Obviously, we know that the, it goes to the mayor's office without being said. And any question that's asked is going to be answered under our tenure. There is nothing that, that needs to be, well, not answered by you, the mayor, the mayor's office, or anybody else that has a question. I got it a won't question. happen going Answer forward. Yes, sir. I got a question. Yes. How much you pay the lawyer? Which one? The one you sued us with. I don't, excuse me? I don't know the exact figure. I'll find it out, and I will get back to you, and okay. I'll let you know as well. I'm not mine, though. Mr. I'm President. President. Oh, you, thanks, Daniel. <laughs> you know, you spoke about collateral damage. You know, you blew the money on a lawyer. That money could have been used to help the seniors. You know, I, I don't understand that at all. Also, th you know, these are all the board appointees, mm -hmm. right? Every one of these come from the town council or from the mayor. On every board that we have in the town, except for one. Gee. Does it Do make any sense at all to you? Do you know that you have the opportunity to come to every meeting and, and take part in this, you know, change no, this? No, what I'm asking. What yes, I'm I do. I, I absolutely do know that. What I'm asking you is, every other board is appointed from these folks right here, yeah. or from these, or, or right. from the mayor. Correct. The difference is it, it's a 501c3 yeah. that it runs by rules and regulations, and also, again, is if it, it wants to be changed, we can do that. I is have no getting, problem with it, though. Is it getting money from the town? Yes. Thank you. Mr. President. Councilman. Mr. Peterson, I, I want to say thank you for coming in front of us. Um, as, as Albert has stated, he hasn't been on the board that long. Right. Um, and I will say that um, for the two meetings that I attended, I never seen anyone so forthcoming to help out on every agenda item that was there. So, and, and I'm sure the rest of the board does a wonderful job also. But I just wanted to thank you for that. And thank I also you. wanted to thank you for being willing to open up the information, invite us to the meetings. Um, I have never received that in the past, so I, I personally want to thank you for that. I, I, I do have a couple of questions um, that I would like answered. Um, Councilman Juicy's question on the attorney, I really would like to know what that cost was and if that has been paid or if any monies are owed to Mr. McAndrews. I would also like to know, um, I'm hearing throughout the town that the chairman currently, the chairman of your board currently doesn't live in the town any longer. And if that is true, do your rules and regulations of your 501c3 allow a non-resident to sit on the board? Yes, they do. Okay. That's all I have right now. Like, like Dino said, I'll, I'll have a lot of questions at budget time. Yeah, Mr. Mr. President. Councilman. Uh, Mr. Peterson, thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate it. As one of the aforementioned new councilmen, I've only seen and, and heard about this issue from, from the other side of the stage, so I appreciate you addressing us. Um, to go off of what Councilman DeStefanis uh, just said, I believe you indicated earlier that you actually might be willing to address the structure of your 501c3 to make some adjustments as to your rules and regulations. Absolutely. Anything is, you know, it, we, it's at that point where we need to sit down and make sure that you guys are happy, the mayor's office is happy, the board of directors is, is, is you know, and everybody 
can sit down and be happy about what's going on. If changes need to be made for that reason, by all means, you give us a lot of money. I don't disagree with you, okay? I understand it fully. We're open to whatever needs to go on. We have to abide by federal laws, state laws, and everything else, and regular rules and regulations like anybody else. Now, um, you know, with that, again, I, I really strongly implore that have you please come the second Tuesday at 7 o'clock to the meetings and take part in them, and or, you know, if it's something else you want to do where you want to set up meetings between, you know, the mayor's office, the council, and the board, or committees, we're open to anything that we want to do. We just want to move forward. And I know it's hard, and I'm not stupid or naive. I understand what's going on in the past and the damage it's done, rightly so. But again, there are a lot of the people here that are involved that we have to take into consideration and go forward. And then I don't think that all of the stories are out. And everybody knows all of the stories. And once we, we do, fine, all well and good. But the fact of the matter is we still have to move in one direction. Or if we stop, what's the ladder of, of what may happen? Nothing good's gonna come out of it. I um, agree with you. Not, this isn't good for anybody that's involved. Councilwoman. I, um, thank you very much, Mr. Peterson, for coming this evening. And I also want to thank you as a representative of the center for supporting the notion of shared leadership on the board with perhaps, as our council president mentioned, three representatives from the administration, three from the council, and three from the center. It seems like it would be a much more equitable way to find consensus and to help the situation move forward. So thank you for that, and I, I think we are already moving forward, and we'll do so at budget season as well. Mr. President, I'm, I'm, so, I'm very sorry. Um, I'll, I, I, I don't know. I'm assuming I could see the packets on everybody's desk, but an individual had forwarded us material about mm -hmm. how they owed money from the center. Marian, can you get him a copy of this? Not now, but you know, can you send them a copy? Okay. Is there a, is there a way that we can find out, you know, why this individual's owed? And it, I mean, this goes back to 2014. I know it wasn't something that you were involved in, but Absolutely. it's um, it's a pretty substantial letter and information attached. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, you know, uh, the the center's attorney sent start, you know, started sending back and forth letters to this individual, rejecting the request, you know, to get an attorney involved. Uh, it's just to me, we could get an answer on that. Sure, I'll, I'll bring it up to Tuesday night's meeting. If you get me, or if I can get a copy of whatever the communication is, it'll be brought up at uh, Tuesday's night, uh, Tuesday's meeting. And again, hopefully, you know, you people, us, our representatives are there, we can discuss it and have it taken care of Tuesday night. But if not, I will, and I'll get back to you after the meeting, if that's acceptable. That's acceptable. And, and one other quick thing, Mr. President. Again, uh, I put no, none of this on you because I realized that you just came on the board, but I, I noticed there are some senior center members, board members in attendance. Would they know how much the attorney um, is currently owed because in order to hire the attorney you would have had to have voted on it and I'm sure he just didn't keep ringing up the tab I'm not too sure about that thank you I honestly I don't know the answer but I will get the answer for you what I don't know <coughs> you, you're gonna need to come up here I can't hear you sorry Nina Salona. I'm on the board. I've been there for several Nina years. Salona. The attorney has paid, been paid a very the exact amount. I can't tell you because I don't have my. We, we get a financial report every month of what has been spent and what has been dispersed with income during the course of the month. I don't don't know just how much, but I do know that he's been. We have sent him letters thanking him for being patient that we have not paid him because we do owe him much. How much we still owe him, I don't. That I haven't got at the end of my uh, fingertips, but we have paid him. Okay. The amount I have in IQ, and I'm sure so that we can get those numbers for you. So because I, I mean to say, you say that there are many questions, Mr. Juicy, that haven't been answered. We don't know what questions need to be answered. Whatever they've asked for, I have four folders since I've been since I've been involved in this last couple of you know, years. We didn't get it. We didn't get everything. 
they gave us they gave us what they wanted to give us they were very selective as to what they gave us we asked for certain information and they refused to give it to us and that's what precipitated the lawyer being hired and well I'm not sure that just which if you were there again um, uh, do it once more tell us what we have not given you because we really don't know okay and that's what's causing the friction mr. president councilman so Nina, thank you so much for everything you do at the Senate. You're welcome. Um, so you're going to be able to provide us with how much the attorney's been paid? Yes. And how much you currently sure owe? Yes. We're very transparent. Well, Everything well, is there. But you brought up at your meetings you get your financial statements. Is there a way those could be shared with the council also? I would. I thought that each month you got someone in the council or the mayor's office got a copy of all the, the, the minutes and the financial statement I, each month. I currently don't have anything, and I've never received anything. I don't know if the administration has. I haven't either. We, we can make sure that that happens going forward if, if you are not receiving. Um, yeah. Again, my suggestion to uh, the board or the, the group that text to you is that not only do you send them, you send them to everybody. So everybody gets a copy of everything. Just quickly, Mr. Chairman, and uh, again, I appreciate um, Mr. Peterson coming here this evening, but there was a question that was just asked um, concerning the um, fees that were paid to the lawyer. Well, there was more than one lawyer. This question is, and you know, we still don't have an answer. Uh, this question has been asked maybe a year and a half now. Um, and I, I just want to make it perfectly clear as long as I'm around, and I think I can speak for everyone on this council, the only thing that could happen at or to the senior center, that it will be come better. Because my ambition at the center is not to have anyone pay for a bus ride, not to have anyone pay for their lunch, not to have anyone have to pay to play cards. There's enough of money being distributed to the center that the seniors that attend that facility shouldn't have to pay one penny for anything. Now we fund the center, 73% of their budget, somewhere around 550 to $580,000. And the thing that really um, upset me was that when we started to ask some of these questions as to the spending, and for the accountability, is that the center chose to hire an attorney with our money that we're funding them to fight us not to answer the questions how they're spending our money. This is absurd. Maybe with new leadership, we can straight some of these things out. And I will tell you this, $40,000 a month and we haven't missed a payment, and we haven't been late on a payment, has been cut to the senior center, $40,000. So Mrs. Peterson, he has some legitimate concerns and questions. Let me say this to you. Might have been four years ago. We thought maybe we'd try to help the center a little more. We'll take care of your gas. We'll pay for all the gas for the vehicles. I was going down Wenaskatucket Avenue one afternoon. I saw a senior center bus being repaired at a local service station. I immediately called the center. 
I said, we have a repair division, a maintenance division, second to none in, in the state of Rhode Island. We can fix your bus. Okay, so I have to fix the bus. It's out of control now. You choose, whoever made this decision, choose to hire an attorney, spend that money. My question is, why did you do that? You would have plenty of money to buy the gas and fix the vans. More importantly, how this all started, and I know for the two new council members, was that it was brought to my attention by a finance director a few years ago. He said, hey, did you see this? What's that? I thought we we're giving the center of the gas for nothing. Taxpayers are paying for it. I said, we are. He said, well, there's $12,000 in the budget charging us for the gas. And I think it's been an issue, by the way, over the years that it's the senior center. Let it go. Because it's the seniors. And I think we all want to make sure the seniors in the town of North Providence are second to none. But we can't let some of the decisions that are, uh, are being made at the senior center take advantage of the rest of the taxpayers. Because our office and every council person here has an obligation. And that obligation is to every taxpayer in this town, not just the senior center. My goal, and hopefully with the cooperation of this council, is to make sure that the seniors are not being used. And in my opinion, when you have the uh, uh, audacity or goal to go out, retain an attorney, to fight the town leaders with their money so that you're, <coughs> you don't have to answer Thank you. the question, bless you, Ray, Thank you. so that you don't have to answer the question as to how you're spending their money Give me a break. And now you come to this council or you come to our office and say, oh, um, you're not giving us the gas for nothing anymore. Excuse me? So with that, what we're saying is, okay, here's some more money to take advantage of the taxpayers. Not gonna happen as long as I'm here. You have a board at the senior center? I know they try their best. Maybe not being, they're being, not being informed as to what's going on there every day. Maybe that's the question. But you have a board at the senior center, guess what? You have a board that appoints themselves. And here we are, taxpayers of the town of the province are fitting 73% of the bill. Oh, and by the way, that does not include the health care. When you add the health care into that number, it's somewhere around $850,000. Cost to the taxpayers. When you look at other senior centers around the state and you compare the spending, this place is out of control. From the top down, out of control. And all I'm asking is that, yes, I want to work together with the senior center, but I want to make sure that the dollars are being spent respectfully and that there's accountability. It's not happening. We get from the budget, oh, um, we're uh, three years in a row. How much did you make on the bingos? 35,000, 35,000, 35,000. That's within the budget. Look back a couple of years ago in the budget. We call the state police, you know how much they, re they made? One year, 52, that's 17,000. Next year they made 42. That's $24,000 of additional money in two years. Where's the money? Now you want to come here and say, oh, you're not giving us the gas any longer. I don't know. I come from business. This isn't working. And I think by Mr. Uh, Peterson coming here tonight, I think it, 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 it clarifies that there's an issue. Because if all of a sudden now you're not charging us back for the gas, oh, well, now it's an issue. So... I want to sit down. I would love to. The best suggestion I heard tonight was that this council and the administration become part of the operations of that center. And I think we need to think about at some point in time, ladies and gentlemen, 
We have a police department. We have a fire department. We have the DPW. We have the library. They're all accountable to this council in our office. The senior center be needs to become a department of the town of North Providence. That's what needs to happen here. Do you know how much money we made in the last couple of years on bingo there, Al, do you know? No, but I don't know how much money you made. Because I know. I, I don't no, but I'm just saying, if you're, you're a board member, see, the board member should know, how much did you make on bingo last year? It's going to help with the operations of the center. You know, honestly, there's, there's, we could have sent to us that report, and I don't have it with me, or remember the number, because no, no. we get those numbers in reports, as you know. Fine, I, and I, listen, I'm not, I really didn't come here for debate, but you need to know what's going on. The fact of the matter is, okay, and look, I respect the fact that they're, they're uh, uh, deriving some revenue through bing having bingos at the center, but we don't know how much is coming in there. I can tell you this, there's a 558 or $560,000 budget before us this year. You're going to get it. And the only thing that budget is asking for is salaries. Not another thing for the center. Not another thing for the seniors. All salaries. You got a director there making $83,000, the highest in the state. You got a board that gave uh, the director a three-year contract. Out of control. You want us to pay, and you want to tell us how you're going to do it. Without being involved, the taxpayers are getting shortchanged. And you know who else is getting shortchanged over there as far as I'm concerned? The seniors. So if we can make a change and we could, you know, manage this facility collectively, the council, our office, and the center, I'd love nothing better than that. But when, you, you know, you, you, you go to the center and, you know, okay, People are told, oh, he wants to shut the center. Why, because we're asking some questions? Not one of us want to shut the center. My ambition is, and this is for the third time in the last, all I want is for it to be the best center in the state. When you compare the spending there to the city of Warwick, they're four times larger than us. We have a total budget of around 738, 750. Warwick's 880,000 four times larger than us. Something's wrong. Look at the town of Johnson. They're at a short of 300,000. We're at seven. We want to work with you, Albert. Let's do it, man. And we're going to do it. And I, I, I agree this needs to happen, but you're going to have to answer the questions. The question of the lawyers, Albert, has been asked for the last year and a half. No one's come clean yet. How much did you pay the attorney? You had two attorneys. How much you pay them? Tell the council. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And maybe this will be the start of it. I'm okay. But listen, it can't go on the way it is. And I think you said it, Mr. Chairman. You are funding, this council's funding the center 73% of their budget. If I was on that board, you know what I'd be doing? The same thing he's doing. What do you want? Let me give you whatever you want. Because if this council and our office shuts them off, it's over. And my opinion is, quite honestly, Shut them off and let the town take it over. That would be the answer. But this is a start, and I appreciate you coming here. Well, that's the tough position that this council has been put in. Um, I know last year there was a budget cut, a significant budget cut, and some of my council members were accused of cutting the budget, when actually, in all reality, we restored half of that. And, and I feel as though that's the way it should have been looked at, not as this council cutting the budget. It was we restored half of the money. And, you know, like I said in the beginning, I don't mean to keep uh, reiterating these points, but we're being used as chess pieces right now. And, you know, these are seven, six talented people. And, and I think, you know, it's kind of an insult to some of us that this is going on like this. And the uh, political harassment, the, you know, negativity on, on social media about some of my council members, and then when something goes wrong, and I will say in the administration, you know, the, the negativity, it's like we control the budget and then something goes wrong and everyone wants to come here and say, well, how are you going to help? And I've kept my mouth shut for a long time and I've been in the middle of this for three years. But now it's getting to the point where 
enough is enough. You know, I even made a suggestion, uh, Ms. Alona, at the, uh, the event I spoke at, and, and you said that, it, I don't mean to put you on the spot at all, but you said it could be a possibility that the, uh, the uh, senior center could possibly be, the board would be open to it, of, of the, the town taking over the finances that we control that goes there. Mr. President, there has been a lot of um, efforts put forth by several members. Um, you can attest to this, and so can the mayor, because he's aware of it. There's nothing, again, to hide um, you know, conversations that we've had and, and things that we're trying to do. The issue is that we're stuck. I will take responsibility. I will apologize on behalf of the board. The fact of the matter is that I don't disagree. If the mayor has a question, if Dick has a question, or Chief of Staff, Mayor Forcer, you have a question, you deserve the answer. Going forward, that's what will happen, as long as I'm part of the board. If it doesn't, as sure as I'm standing here, I will resign. But again, Mayor, if we do shut down and you open up, as long as the seniors are taken care of, fine. I don't think we need to do that. I think that, no, no, you open up another one, that's fine. I, I agree with you, I'm agreeing with you, Mayor. I agree with your frustration. As crazy as people may think, and I'm, I say it like it is, I agree. What I'm asking is can we agree to get together, work together, and move forward? That's all I'm asking. Because we've been wrong. And like I said, I'll stand here because I'm representing them, okay, absolutely. I apologize. With all the stuff that you've talked about, with however the mayor, the chief of staff, people feel, okay, but again, and as we said, the people that are affected by this the most are the ones that we really need to take care of, and we can. We're open for suggestions. There's different ways, there's only a couple of different ways that can happen based on, as you know, um, because of the status of the center, okay? And if there are changes that, that you guys want to make, I need you to be part of them. And there's only certain ways we can do this right now. Like I said, Tuesday night there's a meeting. Somebody has to show up. Councilman uh, DeStefanis has a question, then Councilman Juicy. Uh, Albert, I'll, I'll be at the meetings from now on. So again, I thank Beautiful. you for welcoming us. Yep. Um, but concerning trying to resolve this issue, regardless of what that resolution yes. is, um, I'd be open to stop meeting. The Senate's board, the administration, and the council. Uh, before we have a meeting, just so we get it on the record for what we want. First of all, Al's been a longtime friend of mine. He's called me Dick, not Chief. Um, the, the, problem, <laughs> the problem we have, or we've had, and it only started in the last two or three years, two things, accountability and communications. Communications just broke down, and accountability is terrible. We ask a simple question at a meeting with the board of, the chairman of the board, the director of the senior center, and Mr. McAndrews, attorney McAndrews, who's sitting here. He gets up, now you weren't here, by the way, and, and by the way, we're not killing the messenger. You're, you're the new messenger, so we're not killing the messenger. So we ask a simple question, and like I said, we're beating a horse to death on this, but we have those three people the people who hire them, the people who's providing the services, and he gets up, by the way, the attorney gets up to represent them, the, the attorney that sued us. And after he sits down and makes his case like an attorney would, they could, dis, you know, they, they could defend the, the, they could be prosecutor and defense attorney, that, that's the way they were trained. I got up and asked him a simple question. So, Mr. Attorney McAndrews, so what was your fee and how much have you been paid? So the answer was, well, if you hire monkeys, you get peanuts. That was the answer we got on the record. Mm -hmm. That was an insult. So the chairman of the board is here, doesn't say a word. And the director is here, doesn't say a word. In all fairness, don't you think we should have had that answer? 
So, I think before we have our next meeting, that will be a meeting, if we don't get all the information, it will be a meeting to, you know, schedule another meeting. I would uh, recommend that we have the fees for all attorneys that have provided service to the senior center by name and how much we've paid them and how much is encumbered. So if we owe them money and we've paid them 20000 and we owe them 20000 we should have that information. We should also have... I'm sorry, for how long? A couple of years, years, three years. Three years. Three years? Or two years. Well, when did this all start? Well, go right back to what, the day. Uh, I would say three years, but, you know, I don't want to kill him, uh, you know, not kill him, but, uh, no, well, well, you know, the well, information. Well, they, but when, at least three years. Oh, three years. Oh, oh, oh. I think a lot of this can be resolved at the meeting Tuesday night. That's yeah, but you need to have the information, though. If you're going to go to the meeting and we're going to ask him the same question, all fairness to Al or whoever's going to come, and he doesn't have the information. Now, that information should be right there. We should have the information on the receipts that come into the senior center from all activities and anything that's encumbered that they owe because that's the way we get the final bottom line number on how much it's costing to run that senior center. And there's no question in my mind. I was told just um, was it a week or two ago by a professional who does this so I could run that senior center for half and provide more services. And that's what we're looking for. Hey, by the way, I could easily be a member of that senior center 20 years ago. So um, <laughs> I had one of the members over there come up, you don't like seniors. I said, I'm older than you. <laughs> so in any case, that's the information we need out, and this could be settled without any question, if we have the information. But if we go to a meeting and know regardless of who's there, and we don't have the important information, then it's gonna just be a meeting to have another meeting. So if you get that, don't call the meeting until you have the information. That's my suggestion. And that's what I was gonna, I was gonna suggest the same thing Raymond su suggested, is that eventually we have a meeting of all the council, the administration, and all the members of the board for the uh, Senate. Sit down and let's get this straightened out. This is ridiculous. Three years being sued, uh, fighting with each other, and everything. It's 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 wrong. I agree. With you. And we got to get it straightened out. And I think, like like the chief said, get all that information to us, and you can get us that information tomorrow because they got to have those figures, right? And then we can have our meeting. I don't understand why we can't come Tuesday night and we present that to you as well as these issues are other issues to straighten them out and move forward. Well, I mean, we could. Why how many? How many of us are going to come? Though that's the thing. That no, yeah, that's not because disrespect. again, you know, this is what we need to do. These questions need to be asked, and you get the answers, and you will get the answers. Okay. As well as, you know, to say, we'll do that and then we'll meet, it's kind of almost counterproductive to what we're trying to do. No, no, I, I don't understand. have a problem with it. Yeah, but I'll what I'm saying now. And try and get the information Ow. if that's what it takes. Ow. To All make you have to do work. is go in there tomorrow, and if, and, and if they got a good accounting system, which I'm sure they do, right. right, they can give you the exact number of what they paid and what they owe. Right. End of story. Okay. You, can, you can email that to Mary Ann, and she can get it to the rest of us. Councilman DiLorenzo. Uh, th thanks, Al. Why would you not all come to us? Why would you not get all these people and sit here like right in front like you like you're doing tonight? By the way, very admirable of you to do this. Thank you. But why aren't the rest of the people here? Well, the other board members are here. Um, the I've seen two or three of them. I've seen two yeah, or three uh, of them. Mr. Yeah. Curtis is in the back. I know as Mr. Well. Curtis for 30 years. Right. But, uh, and uh, as I stated, the uh, chairman and the um, he is very sick. Uh, unfortunately, uh, John Fleming is involved with stuff at work and appearing in front of the committee at work. He had said that he was going to try to get here. I don't disagree with you. you know I what? can't this answer for them, but I'm telling you the truth. I, I know that, but this is pretty important. I, I mean? And it's important to them as well. It really I is. I know if my finances were on the line, I'd be here. Right. I don't disagree with you. Uh, that's why I'm asking if you can, I'd like to see all of us sitting together Tuesday night at the center at 7 o'clock and start to work on this and go forward. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming tonight. Thank you. Just... 
Just one thing in closing, uh, Mr. Chairman. I want to make it very clear, and I think the, the mayor stated it a number of times, but I want to make it very clear. The seniors are the foundation of what this town has been built on. Um, when I go there, I, I look at them. Like I said, some of them are my age or older. A lot of them are younger. And I, and I look at them, and some of them are World War II veterans, Korean veterans. And we owe them, you know, more than they're getting. So they are very important to us. We don't want to make them the pawn in this uh, communication gap here. So this is not about what we want. We want to give the seniors more than they're getting now. And every dollar that's spent should be gone to the, the seniors on behalf of uh, the benefits that they get at that senior center. That's all we want. Okay, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Curtis, do you want to say something? Hi, I'm Jim Curtis. I've been on the board a couple of years. Since I've been on the board, I've been involved in this. I don't know what you want to call it, but we've got to resolve it with everybody's help. We're here for the seniors. I will do whatever I can, get you whatever information you need, and back Mr. Peterson 100% along with our other board members. But this is all going to stop. We're going to make this a nice, cozy place for our seniors and all work together, no matter what it takes. We've got to be fair to everyone and our taxpayers. Because I'm one of them. <laughs> but uh, if anybody, you know, has any question, maybe I can answer them. I, as far as that issue you talked about with that person, uh, that's an arbitration. That's what we've been told. That's all we've been told. It's an arbitration. The the payment to the, the woman. individual that you spoke about. <coughs> yeah, I, I don't. The way I read it is, she was brushed aside. No, She's she, still awaiting her money. We were told she, there was an arbitration, so. So you hired an arbitrator, just, and, and again, I think it's a different he, issue, right? Yeah, I think so, too. It's a different issue. Oh, maybe that's sometimes. All right, I would draw that. Yeah, the, I would draw that. I'm the sorry. One that I Thank asked, you, Charlie. The one that I asked be forwarded to yeah. you guys. All right, I, I didn't get pertains the information. to an individual who helped you to All fundraise. Right. We can get you whatever information that you need, yeah. but I just want you to understand that this has got to resolve. I know a lot of you up there, and I know the mayor and, and Mr. Fossa, and it's got to be resolved. It's enough is enough, and uh, we'll do whatever we can to assist you or the mayor's office. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number seven, town council meetings for 2017. Council President Odiello requests discussion and possible vote with regard to the dates of the remaining regularly scheduled monthly town council meetings for calendar year 2017 and a possible amendment and change to those dates. This is really bad news, but <laughs> I'm gonna make a motion to postpone the July meeting since it's always right after the 4th of July and I know uh, attendance is usually low. We did it last year and there was no major issues, um, so. Uh, I'll second that. Okay, <laughs> motion. I'll second. So moved. Motion has been made by Councilman Juicy, seconded by Councilman Brady. Any questions? I do, Mr. President. Councilman? Not, not on the July issue, but considering what we're speaking about, uh, you know, making changes to the 17 calendar, I just have a request. Um, Everyone up here is uh, is a part-time individual. You know, we have families, we have our works, our, uh, you know, our careers. Is there a way that we could get a schedule as to what is the date agenda items are due by? Because the week flows by. Hang on, it's a week before. It's always back. It's a week before the meeting. It's a Tuesday before the meeting. So it's, a, it's always a... It's always a week exactly before the meeting. Okay. Okay. Can we get an email notification on a Monday to say all agenda items are due tomorrow? For those of us who travel, you know, I don't know. I, 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 you don't have a calendar? <laughs> I do have a calendar. You, you, can, you can set a reminder in the email. It'll notify you, a notification. Is, is anybody up here but me think that that's weird? <laughs> weird. <laughs> 
All right, we could discuss that amongst the clerk's <laughs> office. But uh, a motion has been made by Councilman Juicy, seconded by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yeah, the ayes have it. Item number eight, flooding at 22 Tocklin Street. Councilman Amarizia requests discussion and possible vote with regard to flooding at 22 Tocklin Street. Councilman? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, attached to that agenda item is a beautiful diagram that I drew. Uh, sorry for my poor artwork, but just to give you an idea of what's going on, 22 Tocklin Street is <laughs> the lot that runs adjacent to Sudbury Street. Um, in the back of 22 Tarkland Street, there's several privately owned properties that flow downhill. Right behind 22 Tarkland Street's uh, back fence is a portion of Augusta Avenue uh, on which no residences lie. So what happens is basically anytime there's any amount of rain or for that matter any precipitation, all that precipitation flows down the hill catches speed going over that last piece of Augusta Avenue and flows right into 22 Tarkland Street's backyard. Um, complicating matters, on Sudbury Street, there's two drains uh, that back up with regularity uh, anytime it rains. I was first notified of this issue back in actually November, uh, it was election day, uh, the gentleman approached me and I've been out there numerous times since then in various degrees of precipitation to see what's going on. Uh, I can say one day there was a light rain. I, I walked in his backyard. I was down past the soles of my shoes. Uh, the water was going right up into his back door, basically. And then I went out there another day where there was a heavy rainfall. The water was coming from the street into his driveway and also coming down the back hill into his backyard, basically engulfing his whole house with water. Uh, at this point, we've been lucky. Uh, he tends, I don't think he's ever actually placed a claim with the town, uh, so I think we've skirted financial responsibility at this point, but I think he's to a point now where he's incurring some financial loss and he's going to start placing claims. Which one, sir? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, but has, has that been reported uh, to DPW at any point? Uh, yes, it has, Mayor. Apparently, I believe it was about three years ago, um, uh, right around the time uh, Mr. Salvatore took over, he did go out, uh, and apparently he told the homeowner that the drainage pipes and the two drains were probably too small. Uh, they have been fairly diligent about cleaning out debris, um, but when there's a real inundation of rain, the water coming from the front is, is just backing up regardless. The so bigger issue, not yeah, to interrupt you, yeah. is, is actually the water coming from the back. From um, the top from the top. So at one point, DPW placed some uh, small shrubs along the back of, it. The, the gentleman's name is Ron Dory, Mr. Dory's yeah. fence, yeah. and it actually worked in, in, in stopping some of the flow. The problem was nobody after that maintained those yeah. bushes and they died out, so. So, in the future, mm -hmm. the chief left, just call him, tell him what the problem is. I wanna tell you it'll be taken care of tomorrow, I'm not gonna make that commitment. Someone will be out there to take a look at it. And if they did address that at one point and they had, you know, a program to, uh, you know, to take care of it, or at least slow it down, then we'll make sure that they continue that. I don't know what else to say to you, but someone will be out there tomorrow to take away. It's 22, correct? 22, talk with. And make sure you just get a copy of that, uh, you know, those uh, paperwork, whatever you have. Okay. All right. All right. Just call Dick. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Yeah, which aren't there anymore. It's all weird. Yeah. That's a hill. Yeah, that's the a hill right there. Let's make a motion to send a letter to the administration. Send a letter to the administration. Yeah, just okay. to put it on the record. So, all that being said, uh, I'd like to make a motion at this point to send a letter to the administration. Uh, to confirm that DPW will be out to address the two separate flooding issues at 22 Tarkland Street. Second. Okay, motion's been made by Councilman Amarigi, seconded by Councilman Brady. Any questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. That's why. So Item number nine, <laughs> board appointments. Town Council discussion and action with regard to appointments to be made to the following boards. A, board of canvases. I have a motion. You all have a resume in front of you for the 
alternate appointment. We have a motion to appoint Stephen Iannazzi. Mm -hmm. Second. Left. Is there a motion? I should ask. I'll make that motion. Okay, motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman Giusti. Any questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Do we have the minority appointment? No. You've got the. Uh, Didn't Brendan give us some names? He gave us some names over here. Yeah, he gave a couple of names. That was from last, last month, but we can. That was the case. What? Four days, but we can change those. Can I see those names? Yeah, we have them in front of me. I know, I know Mr. Flynn asked that we get this done this month. He's asked three months in a row, but. This is the minority board appointment. Yes. Is anybody cap with a real appointment? They can only hold one board. They cannot change. They just can get paid for only one. Oh, all right. Okay, okay so one appoint. He's recommended. We just put it on the tax board over here. Last oh, month. Okay, do we have a motion to appoint Gary Winecoop to the minority appointment? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman Giusti. Any questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. B, Board of Trustees, Public Libraries. Mr. President. Councilman. I'd like to have the library board uh, continue. Okay, motion's been made to continue by Councilman DiLorenzo. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Fayola. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. C, Board of Tax Review to replace Mary Beth Solkowski, who has recently resigned. That's a minority appointment. Okay, so I'll make a motion to continue this to next month. So moved. There's a motion has been made by Councilman Juicy, seconded by Councilman DiLorenzo. Any questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Item number D. Item D. Building Facilities Committee, Council Member Appointee. Do I have a motion to appoint Councilman DeStefanis? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Brady, seconded by Councilman DiLorenzo. Any questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Item number 10, claims submitted. Town Council discussion and action with regard to claims received from the following. Giovanna Angel, John Angel, and Desiree Bianco by Attorney Arthur Bucci, the third, 1650 Smith Street, North Providence, Rhode Island. <coughs> Rosa Muniz by Attorney Robert Levine, 544 Douglas Avenue, Providence, Rhode Island, 02908. Talia Lonato, 30 Holly Hill Lane, Cranston, Rhode Island, 02921. Item 11, Claims Committee Report, Town Council discussion and possible vote with regard to the Claims Committee Report and approval. Denial or referral of claims within said report to be presented by Councilman Fiola. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, claims Committee meeting was held earlier this evening. Uh, unanimous vote, Angel forward to Towns Carrier for bodily injury. Muniz, unanimous vote, forwarded to Town Carrier for bodily injury. And Leonardo is continued to the next meeting, unanimous vote. We have a motion to accept the Claims Committee report. So moved. Second. Motion been made by Councilwoman Brady, seconded by Councilman Giusti. Any questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. 12, Finance Committee Report. Town Council discussion and possible vote with regard to the Finance Committee Report and approval, denial, or referral of items within said report, including but not limited to tax abatements over $1,000 received from the Tax Assessor and Board of Tax Review to be presented by Councilman DeStefanis. Councilman? Thank you. Uh, can you pass that down to Marianne? And then um, these are the minutes. Sure. Minutes are double sided. Um, the Finance Committee held a meeting on Monday, the 27th of February. Uh, meeting was called to order at 6.30. Uh, two discussions on the table that evening. One was tax abatements over $1,000. Um, Tom Kane, the tax assessor, came um, and also provided um, 
reasoning for the abatements, which are included in the packet that was handed to Marion and on file in the clerk's office. Uh, the, the committee recommended abating $3,504.79 in various abatements. Uh, the second item that was on the agenda was the annual audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th. Um, at that meeting, the committee made three recommendations to the council. All three require a letter. The first letter is a letter to the school department or the school committee requesting information as to the $218,000 five-year bond that's listed on page 42 of the audit. Requesting information concerning, you know, was council approval needed for that debt obligation? If so, when did said council give the approval? And the reason for the bond and what the funds are currently being used for. The second letter was also to the school department or the school committee requesting information pertaining to the special revenue funds totaling $192,429 listed on page 97 of the audit, um, requesting how the revenue is generated, who administers the funds, and um, why they don't go through the current town's meter system. Third letter recommended being sent to the school committee was a letter relating to the deficit that the school department incurred <coughs> in 2016. I realized that the town, you know, put forth a million eighty-six thousand uh, dollars, but the question's been asked of, you know, what what is that deficit comprised of? So, you know, what what you know what happened during the fiscal year that they overran their budget? And then secondly, what's the current financial status? Make a motion that we submit all those letters. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Juicy, seconded by Councilman DiLorenzo. Any questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, uh, we also, since Councilman Juicy's motion only included the letters, we have to make a separate motion to uh, approve the abatements for the $3,504.79. I'll make a motion to approve the abatements. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Juicy, seconded by Councilman Brady. Any questions? If you're none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Item number 13, tax abatements under 1,000. Town Council discussion and action with regard to the list of tax abatements under $1,000 received from the tax assessor and board of tax review in the amount of $322.61 for motor vehicles. Do I have a motion to abate? So moved. For a second. 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 Motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman Juicy. Any questions? Favor you none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion been made by Councilman Juicy, second by Councilman Stephanus. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed?